webinar is done, um, within a couple of days, you will get a link to be able to recording. Um, in case you do end up missing something or maybe you were kind of checked out for a second. So, um, here a few more minutes. And we'll get started. Yeah, so you will be able to rewatch this um, <clears throat> probably in a couple of days. Yeah, Matthew? Uh, yeah, yeah, usually 24 hours. It will be available on YouTube. Okay. Will we email them a link or will it just be on YouTube? Yeah, we will send to them the link. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. So I think let's go ahead and just get uh, this party started. And some people will eventually jump on uh, maybe a couple of minutes late as well. So I just wanted to do a quick introduction for those of you who don't know me. My name is Araz Nelson. Um, I'm an educator for Moan. I've been a stylist for 19 years this year, um, and 14 of those years I have been involved in education. So just a little background, I still do work behind the chair um, in Southern California, and I'm obviously working with Medix and Moan and doing these, um, this education. So I also wanted to introduce Maurizio. You guys will see on your screen, um, he is also uh, a host of this webinar. He is part of the Moan family, and he's actually joining us from Italy. Um, yes. He shared with us 8 p.m. in Italy. So I wanted to give it to Maurizio if you want to say anything. Yes, just uh, thank you to everyone to joining to, to this webinar. Good morning or good evening or good afternoon, depends by the, the zone. And uh, I'm really happy to be here together uh, with you to, to follow this webinar. Yeah. So what Mauricio is going to help me with is um, he's going to help kind of moderate the Q&A section. So during the, the, the presentation, we'll take a couple of breaks for question and answering, and he will read off the questions so that I make sure that I don't miss uh, anything. So um, I would obviously like to welcome you guys today to Deep Dive with Medix, uh, covering great coverage. So that's what we are discussing today. Um, you know, over the years in working in salons and working with stylists, I've realized that there's a lot of, um, a lot of us who sometimes struggle when it comes to achieving uh, proper gray coverage and really understanding the complexities and nuances of gray hair. And I always say it's not um, a glamorous topic to talk about. It's not fun like vivids or like balayage, but for most stylists, um, our gray coverage clients are really our bread and butter clients. Those are the clients who come in every four to six weeks religiously. And I think it's our job to make sure that we get their formulas perfect. And what's happened is sometimes people struggle with um, gray coverage in general. And, you know, gray coverage is not a, a one size fits all category of hair color. So I'm excited today to talk about that. Um, a brief overview on how this kind of webinar is gonna flow, just so you have an idea of what's gonna happen. So I'll be covering, obviously, the innovative technology behind Magix. I'll be covering our color families, um, explaining the different nuances in our color families, and how to mix for maximum impact when it comes to gray coverage. Um, we'll also be discussing gray hair. What is it? What causes it? Um, we'll get a little sciency in the makeup of gray hair, understanding chemicals, um, and, and understanding all of that to help you better achieve the gray coverage results that you're looking for. Um, we'll then go into identifying different gray, gray, cover, or gray hair and how to identify the percentages and how to mix for the desired uh, result that you're wanting. So it is a jam-packed um, webinar. There's a ton of information in here. Um, I would encourage you, if you have a pen and paper, to take notes. And again, also ask a lot of questions. So like I said, we'll be taking a couple of breaks to address any questions. 
Um, but as we go through the webinar, feel free to submit them in the chat box. Now, my only request is when you do submit a question, um, just make sure that you can be as specific as possible regarding the topic that you're asking about, because sometimes what will happen is somebody will ask a question about a slide and, you know, we've moved on about 15 slides. So be specific in the question um, regarding the topic and the details so that I can best answer that for you. Um, and we will cover that a couple of times throughout the webinar. So if all that sounds good, let's get ready to dive in. Um, I'm excited to, if, if those of you who are already users of Magix 10, um, this is some information that you've already heard, but I want to uh, make sure that I cover it again. And I can see just really quick, my slide seems a little distorted, so I apologize for that, but the information is there. So what? who is Magix 10? Who is Moan? Um, it's an Italian-based uh, color company, and they are a family business. They've been in business, um, in, in 2011 was the initial launch of Magix 10 cover, or color. And um, we'll go into a little bit of the details on what makes it different, because in 2015, there was a relaunch. And what happened is, um, <clears throat> you know, as technology has progressed and, and as more uh, technology was available, they actually pulled the product, relaunched the color line with completely brand new technology. And that's what we will actually be covering today. Um, here's the difference uh, between Magix 10 and possibly some other, uh, if you're familiar with any other 10 minute color lines. So, First of all, we have a very low ammonia content, which means it is not going to be aggressive on the hair. It's not, we, don't, we haven't added high alkalinity to um, make this process happen quicker. So the ammonia content is low. Um, the color is very gentle and conditioning on the hair. So for any of you who've actually used it, some people tell me the hair feels better um, after I've used Magix Color on it. And, um, it's true, and that's because of a complex called CareVeg 18, which I'll cover in a little bit. Uh, with Magix 10, you're going to get 100% gray coverage. Okay, it is possible to get 100% gray coverage. And today I'm excited to actually dive deep into how to achieve that gray coverage that you're looking for. Um, with Magix 10, our color is not progressive. So a lot of stylists sometimes have some hesitation when they hear 10 minute color. They think, uh oh, here we go. It's going to be drab. It's going to be muddy. It's going to be, you know, you put a level seven. If you leave it on for longer than 10 minutes, they think that it's going to progress. And with Magix 10, that simply just is not the case. Um, it is not progressive. So if you do leave it on a little bit longer, you don't have to worry about your formula darkening. Um, Magix is a full color line. So we have 86 shades to choose from, um, and it can be used as a permanent, as a demi like. We have ultra lift blondes, we have toners. Um, it's really a colorist color and you can use it on just about every single client. So just rest assured that this is not like any other 10 minute color that you've probably experienced. Um, and for those of you who have used it, I'm sure you can attest to that. So here's just a little bit about what uh, makes Magix 10 um, different. So a lot of people, one of the first questions stylists or uh, anybody really has is how does it work in 10 minutes? And one of the main features of Magix 10 Color is the Spectrum technology, and it is basically micro pigments. So if you could imagine the dyes and the couplers that are being used are significantly smaller in size and lower in molecular weight. So what that means is during the hair coloring process, what happens is we tend to use an alkalizer to soften and swell the hair so that dye molecules can then transfer into the cortex. Well, because these dye molecules are significantly smaller, we don't have to um, agitate and soften and swell the hair to the extreme. So the smaller dye molecules will then get into the hair <clears throat> a little bit quicker. And really what makes uh, spectrum technology shine is that the dye molecules then couple and combine quickly. So what tends to happen, and this is a uh, great visual representation. So you can see on the top, this is a traditional hair color 
coupling model. Okay, obviously this isn't legitimately what's happening in the hair, it's just a visual for you to understand that say you have a coupler that's on the top and a, I'm sorry, a dye molecule and another dye molecule. What happens is they combine and couple to make the color that we see. This is chemistry. So traditional hair color doesn't couple as quickly. If you look at the bottom um, <clears throat> diagram, each two dye molecules are coupling at a faster rate. So what that means is the couplers that is used in spectrum technology just combine quicker, allowing for this 10 minute process time. So you take a smaller uh, pigmented dye and a quicker acting coupler and you can get these results in 10 minutes. So we're not um, over, overloading the tube with, um, the diode is not incredibly heavy and it's not highly alkaline. It's just the technology that's being used is completely different. So they just combines quicker, allowing a shorter processing time. I hope that makes sense so far. <clears throat> um, this is an important, I think to me, this is the most important thing when it comes to Magix 10 is the CareVeg 18. So a lot of times um, what stylists are now looking for is not only a color line that works, that's predictable, that is easy to use, but we also want something that's going to help us maintain the integrity of the hair. Um, and we can do that in a multitude of different ways, but what I personally love about Medjix is that they have this complex called CareVeg 18. It is vegetable-based um, amino acids, and essentially it's, it's helping maintain the condition and the integrity of the hair during the hair coloring process. So it's adding shine and longevity. It is protecting from environmental stress like um, wind, sun, salt water. Uh, it's also increasing the strength and elasticity. It has um, soy and wheat proteins and different amino acids that are plant-based, but it's built into the color tube. So it's not like a secondary ingredient you have to add in. Um, every tube has this complex in it. So. For those of you who messaged me saying, wow, the hair is so shiny, the hair feels so great, part of that is because of CareVeg 18. So it is in every tube of color. It is also in the fixed six volume developer, which we'll cover, um, also in the shampoo and conditioner. It's just such a great nourishing treatment for the hair, and it's in every color. So I want to take a second, and now we're getting a little bit um, <clears throat> sciencey, and this may confuse a couple of people, but I want to explain what this slide means. So <clears throat> during the hair coloring process, okay, every single stylist, when you've used a permanent color, you mix two different solutions together. You're mixing an ammonia or an alkalizing agent, and you're mixing hydrogen peroxide. These are the two main ingredients you need for the hair coloring process. What has happened is I think some of us um, don't understand the roles of these chemicals and it's important to understand <clears throat> what they do. And so I want to break down um, ammonia, ammonia or an alkalizing agent. So for Medjix, we do use ammonia. It is an ammoniated color. And ammonia's pH is anywhere between a 10 and a 12, depending on your tube, okay? The job of an alkalizer or the job of ammonia is to raise the pH of the hair. So when you raise the pH, what you're doing is you're softening and swelling the cuticle. This needs to happen for hair color to occur. So the cuticle layers now expand so that hair coloring can happen. So that's the job of ammonia. It softens and swells the cuticle, okay? Now, hydrogen peroxide is an acid. It is pH between 3.0 to 4.0. Its job in the hair color process is this, okay? So its job is to deliver the dyes. Remember those micropigments we were talking about? When you mix developer and color together, it's the developer's job to deliver those dyes into the cortical fibers. While it's doing that, it is fracturing melanin. We're creating undertone. So developer in combination with ammonia breaks up melanin and creates your undertone. And developer is also responsible for developing the dyes. 
So whatever combination of chemicals and dye intermediaries that are in the tube, developer develops them, okay? So developer is an acid. Ammonia is alkaline. And these are, these are their jobs, okay? So what I always ask people, especially in classes, is do chemicals have a brain? And the answer is no, okay? Chemicals do what they do every single day, twice on Sunday. Ammonia softens and swells the hair. The developer does. This is what they do. And the reason I present this slide in almost every color class that I do is because how many times have we heard people say, oh, well, I don't use that because it doesn't cover gray. I don't use that because it's too green. I don't use that because it's too whatever. Um, and the fact of the matter is the chemicals do what the chemicals do. So how can we as colorists understand that you can't blame a, a color line or a chemical for not doing its job? Ultimately, we have to understand and be grounded in the fundamentals of hair coloring and understanding remaining pigment, understanding texture, and, um, and understanding that we have the power to, to, to really formulate and create these results. It's not on the chemicals. So um, just an important little slide that I like to, to uh, include because it's, it's personal responsibility behind the chair, right? So if you're not getting the results you want, we can't automatically go blame the chemicals. What are we not doing right? What are we missing? What are we not doing properly? So hey, Raz. Yes. Hi, this is Jay. Could you slow down just slightly? There's a couple of people that have, um, they're having a hard time following. Not, okay. that you're too, not that you're overly fast, but if you could slow down just a little bit, we, they'd appreciate it. Yes, I do. I apologize. Thank, no, no worries. Thank you. It's just what we do. We just talk with our hands and we talk really fast. So yeah, I will slow it down. Um, so the point of this was to just understand as a stylist that the chemical doesn't have a brain, okay? The hair color or the developer or whatever solution that we are using, we are the ones controlling the outcome. And I, I put this to say, you know, don't go blaming um, this color because it's too green or that color because it's too gold or this one didn't cover the way I, it should have. Um, when we're grounded in uh, understanding formulation and remaining pigment and how to um, kind of navigate the formulation process, it's our responsibility to get the results that we want. And so I put this as a reminder of, of, of hair colors, or it's just chemicals. And sometimes we forget that because we make pretty colors and uh, we do lots of fun things, but at the end of the day, they're combining different chemicals to get certain results. So we have to combine them properly and formulate and understand um, the nuances of different hair to get certain results. So we'll cover a little bit more about that uh, down the road, but just a reminder, we're working with chemicals, okay? I want to just touch on um, the tonal families that we have in Magix 10 color line. Okay, um, this is a great visual representation of this slide, which a lot of people have seen. This is our color wheel. It's in our swatch book. Um, and it's great because it shows you where every single color lies on the color wheel. This slide is basically the same thing, but a wordier version. And there's a couple of things that I want to um, put some, put your attention on. So first of all, it's incredibly important to know and be familiar with the background tones that you're working with. Um, all manufacturers have different background tones. So when you're using Magix, when you're converting to Magix, it's important to know what you're mixing, okay? So we have our tonal families. The natural is the 0, and that is a yellow-green background tone. So it is a, a, a cooler natural, okay, compared to our intense natural, which is 0 .00. Uh, that's a yellow-orange background tone. So the difference between those two families is that one is cooler and one is warmer. What tends to happen a lot of times is people, especially stylists, we automatically assume that when we see 0 .00, that that means 
um, extra pigment or double natural. And that means that's what you want to use for gray coverage. And that is not um, necessarily the case with Medjix, okay? Point zero just means that it is a cool natural with a more of a green background tone. Um, intense natural point zero zero is a warm natural with a little bit more of an orange background tone. So when you grab point zero zero thinking you're going to get additional gray coverage, that's not the case. Warm and cool. Okay. Um, we also have a few different ash options. We have the point one, which is a blue green. We have a new color family, which is the double ash point one one, a little bit more blue. So depending on the canvas that you're working on, you might need a little bit more ash or a little bit more blue, and that's where you would use the double ash. Um, and just going down the list, we have an ash violet that, that has a, uh, that violet to it. So when you're using uh, coloring hair in the eight, nine, 10 levels, um, the ash violet's a great choice because you have some violet to counteract the yellow, but you also have some blue to counteract some of that orange. Uh, so as you can see, guys, it is a full color family. We have violet, gold, copper. Um, our mahogany is a uh, red violet. We have two different reds to choose from. Um, if you want a cooler red, you can use the 0.62, and um, that's a red, red violet. And if you want a warmer red, you can use 0.66, which is like a red, red, orange. So honestly, your, your opportunities to formulate for any client is possible because of the full color line. Um, I want to take uh, just one minute and explain the maroon versus the cold maroon for those of you in the United States. So I think it's maybe different for anybody tuning in from Europe, but in the United States, we are accustomed to when we hear maroon, we think um, like a Merlot or like a Burgundy. And with Medjix, Maroon is essentially a very warm brown. So it's not a red violet, it's a warmer brown. Um, and the Cold Maroon is a warm brown with a little bit of ash. So it's absolutely, these are beautiful colors. And I find some people in the US are a little bit standoffish with them. So they're just a warmer brown, they're beautiful. Um, and then we have a sand, which has a yellow, yellow green background, but um, when you, when I've swatched it, when I've used it, it's very beigey, um, a very sandy, sandy color. So these are, this is what's possible. Um, 86 shades in all of these color families. This is a, um, I know you probably can't see the upper right hand side of it, but this is a picture of the our paper swatch book. So you can see all the different options that you have. Um, so it's important to, to realize that this isn't just a quick little 10 minute color line. This is a full color line that you can use on every single client. And for those of us stylists who are finally able to reopen, um, how great is it to have the option to, you know, do a root touch up in, in 30 to 45 minutes. You don't have to spend an hour and a half or two hours with a client. Um, and you can formulate for every single client. So this is again, back to the color wheel. For me, this is very, very helpful when I transitioned my clients to Magix um, because I compared Magix color wheel with the color wheel that I was using to really understand what the difference in tonalities were. Because as I'm sure most of you stylists know, um, a natural is not a natural across the board. People have different little tonalities within their natural series, um, as well as their ash and their gold. So using this color wheel as a tool to help you when you are integrating Magix into your clientele um, is gonna be a really great way for you to feel confident when you're, you're bringing on your formulas, okay? Um, I want to spend a couple of minutes on the developers. So some people will ask me, well, why is it 12 and 21 and 32 and 40 volume? Why not just use 10, 20, 30, 40? And it's honestly a great question. Um, and the reason for that is how this color line processes in 10 minutes is two reasons. One, because of the spectrum technology. Remember, we covered that a couple of slides ago, talking about 
um, the micro pigments, the smaller pigments coupling quicker. So you take that plus a developer that's slightly more oxygenated. So instead of a traditional, for example, a traditional 20 volume is 6% oxygen, okay? With Magix, we're using 21 volume. So there's a little bit more oxygen. Now remember, what is the role of developer? Its job is to deliver the dyes. Its job is to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, so to deliver the dyes, to fracture the melanin and also develop the dyes. So when you take a little bit more oxygen, it's a little bit more power in your developer to have that 10 minute processing time occur, okay? So combo of spectrum technology micropigments plus slightly higher oxygenated uh, developer makes this happen in 10 minutes. Um, a question I get asked often is what is FIX? As you guys can see on the screen, we have FIX, which is essentially a six volume developer. So with Magix, you're not only having the opportunity to do a permanent color application, you can also make the color act like a demi-permanent or use it to tone, and that comes with using FIX developer. So you're slightly acidifying and you're able to now use these colors for, uh, to get like a demi-permanent like result. So that is in a nutshell, just a little bit about Magix 10, um, the tonal families and how it works and we'll move into now deep diving into gray coverage. But I wanted to just take a break and um, give the opportunity to answer just a few um, questions before we move on to some of the more uh, exciting stuff. So. You let me know, Maurizio. Yeah. yeah, so we have so far two questions. Two questions. One question is, uh, what is the percentage of uh, the ammonia in the Magix 10? And the, we know that the ammonia percentage varies be, uh, between uh, shades, but it is from 1% to 2.7%. And the same, Alex asking, uh, is the Caravag 18 in every product of Moa? Yes, it is. Uh, in the new developers, we also will include the Calabag 18. Then uh, another question. I want to use the sand on a client with gray. Would I add 0 0.0 or 0 0.00? So what is the percentage of gray? It's kind of a, a loaded question, but typically I would say 0 0.0. Because the sand is a cooler result, I'm assuming you're wanting a cooler result. So the point zero is probably going to be the way you'd want to go. Okay. So then Sasha, uh, she missed the explanation about the developer. Can you recap for her? So the developers, I'll go back to that screen so you guys can see. Um, it's, is it similar to 10, 20, 30, 40? Yes, it is. Um, however, it's slightly more oxygenated. So there's a little bit more oxygen in our developers, which is what is one of the pieces on why this works in 10 minutes. Um, so our 12 volume would be similar to a 10, it's just a little bit more oxygen. Um, and then our fix is a six volume. So what I wouldn't recommend is trying to mix Magix 10 color with your other brand developer. Um, this is all made to work in harmony together to get the best results. So you would have to use either the 12, 21, 30, or 40 um, for the color to work its best. Okay, another question. Can we use other developers? I'm gonna say no. Um, you have to understand guys, Manufacturers spend millions of dollars testing their products in order for it to be the best, um, to get the best results. So I know a lot of hairdressers do that. They'll do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I, you're going to do what you want to do, but you're not going to get the best results if you don't use the developer um, that is dedicated to the line. Okay, then another question. When using fix? the six volume, do you need to let the color set for a few minutes before using? Can you repeat that? Okay, so uh, uh, when using the fix, uh, the six volume, 
Do you need to let the color set for a few minutes before using it? No. You can mix it and apply it right away. The more you let it sit, the more the ammonia will dissipate. So I don't know if you're asking um, what the color is. He is asking to turn it in a demo. No, you don't have to let it sit. You can mix and apply. It would be like a, a demi-like. So it's not a true acidic demi, but it can act like a demi. And we'll cover kind of how to go about doing that later on. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, use the 21 volume for gray coverage. For standard gray coverage, yes. Um, but, you know, we have to take a look at the different results that you're wanting to achieve depending on the different hair types and that's what we're going to cover in this next kind of um, block is how to get the results that you want what kind of gray coverage are you looking for and what's really going to be the best approach but standard gray coverage is 21 volume okay uh, another question is you say you say that the developer has more oxygen that is great. However, that means that the color can, I suppose, fade quickly. Fade quickly. Because it's slightly more oxygenated, you're going to assume that it's going to fade more quickly. Um, you have to understand it's not oxygenated to where instead of a 20, you're using a 30. It's just slightly more oxygen, 0.6% more for uh, the 12 volume, 0.3% more than the 21 volume. So in my experience, it has not caused it to fade quicker because it's not like it's significantly more oxygenated. Yes. It's okay. Uh, if in a salon runs out of 21 volume, what, what is your recommended in a pinch? In a pinch, you can mix 12 and 32 together to get something like a 21. Um, you're not going to get it exactly, but you can mix equal parts of each to get something in the middle. Okay, now another question from Raquel. If using the ultra blondes as toner, can I add the color enhancers if I need more blue or violet? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, you also have to be mindful that the blue and violet are very deep and darker colors. Although they don't have levels associated with them, you could assume that the blue would be somewhere around a level three or four. So when you're adding blue into a level 10, you know, you have to be very, very mindful of how much uh, you're going to add because it can deepen or darken your form. But yes, you can. Okay. Another question is from Miroslav, I suppose, from Norway. Uh, hello, can I ask you, please, did you ever try to use Magic Stan and apply on wet hair? I don't think for gray hair. I apply, personally, I apply on damp hair, on clean damp hair. So I wouldn't recommend soaking wet hair because you're, it's going to be a lot harder to get coverage. But when you apply on damp hair, which is slightly wet, you actually get better coverage because of what's going on chemically. The water and the color and the water and the hair um, kind of attract to each other. It's called hydrogen bonding. So when you apply on damp hair, you can get better gray coverage, just not wet. Don't put it on wet hair. Okay. Um, another Take quest. One. Sorry? Take one more question and we'll move on because we have another opportunity to ask questions later. Yeah, okay. Let's just uh, finish because I have a couple that they are waiting. So I'm new to this color line. What are some staple shades? to add in your color cabinet instead to buy every shade? That's such a loaded question because um, it really depends on your clientele. But I mean, if you were to ask me, my staple shades would be naturals from you know level three to eight, um, a couple of the warm naturals, ashes, golds, and a few reds and red violets. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I could give is to purchase the enhancers, which are, um, they're color enhancers. So they're like red, blue, violet, um, green, yellow, orange, and gray. And these are what you can mix in with your natural to create a shade that maybe you might not be carrying. 
Um, so you can mix these enhancers in with any color to customize. Um, so if you don't want to carry the whole line or you don't have the space, it's important to look at your, your clientele and see what you use the most of and then purchase those as well as some of the enhancers so that you can kind of, you know, create your own formulas if you don't have what you want, is what I would say. I use the enhancers um, on every single client. I think they're very underused, underappreciated. Uh, so I would say definitely uh, invest in some enhancers. Okay, so we have other three questions from Michelle, Mark, and Brenda. Are we going to uh, maybe reply on next next session if you guys don't mind let's hold off for a second um because like i said there's a lot of information to cover so we will have another q a session um, in just a little tiny bit <clears throat> so i want to now go in and dive in to um gray hair okay like i said earlier gray hair is incredibly nuanced and People will, stylists will talk about gray hair like it's a one size fits all um, category of color. And I think it's the most varying um, type of client. So understanding um, why does hair go gray? Uh, what we'll be covering is, you know, determining the percentages of gray, what causes gray hair to be resistant, how to color gray hair effectively, um, and then we'll go into different ways to formulate for different uh, gray coverage results. So the one thing that, um, it's not the one thing, it's a very important factor, is gray hair itself does not exist, okay? It is an optical illusion. And what happens is you have hair that is white intermixed with hair that is naturally pigmented, so it makes us see gray, okay? And the lighter the natural hair, the lighter the gray appears. And the reason I say this is because when I realized this, it changed uh, my, my perspective on how to get the gray coverage result that I'm wanting. So it's essentially when you have somebody who is a natural blonde intermixed with some of that white hair, we have the illusion of a sandy blonde or a pearl blonde. Um, natural light brown hair intermixed with white hair gives us the illusion of like a slate gray. And darker brown or black hair when mixed with white looks like a smoky gray. So the reason I say this is you have to understand when we're doing gray coverage, it's just as important to understand the amount of salt in the hair, which is the white, um, as well as the pepper. And that pepper, what level is that pepper at? So we have, we're, we're addressing two different problems um, on a head of hair. And this is if it's all dispersed evenly. Sometimes clients have a chunk of just 100% white and the rest is um, a little bit more salt and pepper. So as a stylist, when you're going to formulate for your gray coverage, it's important to know what level is the pepper. Right, because if you're not clear on what level the pepper is, you use a color that's too light, you're gonna get incredibly warm results because that pepper maybe was at a level three mixed with white. Okay, so it's important to know not only percentages, but the, you know, was it a, a natural blonde, a natural um, brown or dark brown, okay? So this was an aha moment for me when I realized that. So what causes gray hair? For, any of you who know me um, and, and my teaching with Magix, especially in Southern California, I'm very interested in understanding um, why things happen. And I've always been told when you know why things happen, it's easier to mitigate problems. So what causes gray hair? I feel like maybe some stylists don't know. Um, we blame it on, uh, you know, your client's husband is stressing you out or you have too many kids or you're too stressed. Maybe that's why your hair is going gray. But the truth of the matter is it is a chemical reaction that's happening in our body. So our body stops producing this amino acid called tyrosine. So if you're not, um, just bear with me because this is a little bit sciencey. So our hair follicles over time will accumulate more hydrogen peroxide. So there is hydrogen peroxide that our body creates and um, gets accumulated as we get older into the follicles 
of our hair. Now remember earlier what hydrogen peroxide does is it lightens melanin, okay? So older follicles don't generate this enzyme called catalase. And what catalase does is it keeps the hydrogen peroxide in check. So essentially higher levels of hydrogen peroxide in our hair um, attack the tyrosine, which is the amino acid that helps um, create melanin. And hair essentially is now bleaching itself from the inside out. So it doesn't mean that white hair doesn't have any pigment, it just slowly loses the amount of melanin that's in actual hair. So here's like an example of what pigmented hair would look like versus non-pigmented hair. So th just the key on the side, obviously the round um, modules are melanin, and then we have H2O2, we have catalase, and then the two dots is uh, H2O2 broken up. So in pigmented hair, in regular hair that's not gray, we have more catalase, so we don't have as much hydrogen peroxide, so the catalase helps keep everything in check and we have more melanin. In non-pigmented hair, due to oxidative stress, due to aging, um, we have less catalase, therefore more hydrogen peroxide and less melanin. I know this is a little bit out there, but you gotta understand what's going on from the inside. And then what happens that causes hair to become resistant? So tyrosine, which is predominantly, um, its job is to make the melanin. Instead of making melanin, it's still producing cells. So what tends to happen is resistant hair ends up creating a, a uh, many, many more layers of cuticle, okay? So your average uh, strand, hair strand, has between seven to 10 layers of cuticle. When it comes to resistant and white hair, sometimes 15 to 20 plus layers of cuticle. So you have to understand that when you're working with hair that is resistant, you're dealing with way more layers of cuticle. Now remember, the ammonia is what softens and swells the cuticle. So if your formulation isn't correct based on the texture of the canvas that you're working on, um, you're not going to get the coverage that you're looking for. Because think, you're working with 20 layers of cuticle now that that color has to work through to try to penetrate and get a coverage result. So all of that to say, it's so important to really understand not only what's going on and what's causing the gray hair or the resistant hair, but how to navigate it and how to kind of finesse your formulas to get the coverage that you're looking for. So I know that was a little bit um, kind of deep into understanding what's happening and obviously I will answer any questions, but I think the more you know, the more you're empowered and the more confident we feel when we're uh, formulating. Texture and porosity is another important factor when it comes to hair coloring in general, but especially gray hair. So I'm gonna to touch on this for a little bit. I think over um, the next few months, we'll have a little bit more, uh, we'll do some webinars that go deeper into understanding uh, how to work on different canvases. But just for right now, when we're dealing with the texture of somebody's hair, if you can see on the left of the screen, you have a fine, medium, and coarse. You have to understand that fine hair has a smaller diameter than coarse hair. So coarse hair is a lot thicker, a lot larger of a diameter than fine. So if you could imagine, fine hair will always appear darker. If you use the same exact formula on fine hair versus coarse hair, because the diameter is so much smaller, your formula will look darker, surely for the fact that their hair is fine. So when you're going to formulate, you have to think about, okay, what is the texture? If it's fine, how do you then finesse your formula, maybe go higher one level, uh, maybe add less dye versus coarse hair, a thicker diameter, it can handle more color. It won't look as dark, so maybe drop down a level. 
So I'm hoping you guys are having some aha moments with this in when it comes to formulating because it all plays a factor in getting the results that you're looking for. Um, texture plays a factor as well as porosity. So for example, if you guys have ever dealt with a client that has um, low porosity hair, what that means is that cuticle is super tightly compact. It's not slightly open, it's not frayed, it is just, okay? When you're dealing with hair like that, for example, you know your client has hair like that when you uh, pour water on their hair and the water kind of beads off of their hair for a little bit before it actually gets soaked. That's low porosity hair. Um, that's the kind of hair where when you put color on it, it, it doesn't lay down, it just kind of bing, sticks right back up. Low porosity. So understanding that if you're working with hair that is low porosity, how can you shift your formula? You might need more alkalinity to help soften and swell the cuticle versus high porosity. We all have clients who have high porosity hair. Most of us probably have high porosity hair ourselves. So you're familiar with working um, with high porosity hair, typically in blonding or toning, but also incredibly important with gray coverage, right? Because if the hair is highly porous and fine, let's just take that combination real quick. Fine hair, highly porous. What's gonna happen when you put a formula on her? Okay, the roots where her hair is fine is going to appear darker. The ends where the hair is porous will now uptake the, the um, it doesn't take warmth very well. So it will look dull and drab and darker. So unless you create your formula to address the, the texture and the porosity to get an even result. So all of this to say it's incredibly important to see and understand who you're working on. I get a lot of formula questions. A lot of people ask me for formulas and my first question is what's the texture? What's the porosity? What's the natural level? And what's the percentage of gray? It's very difficult to give a formula without understanding the different nuances of the hair. So um, hopefully that'll get you to stop and think, you know, what are you putting what color are you applying to what situation? Okay, so we'll go answer a couple more questions and then we'll get into how to formulate for gray. Okay, <clears throat> so some questions from the previous uh, session. Uh, what if I want to cover gray hair but I don't want to leave natural color? What, what developer sh should I use? Okay, so if you want to cover gray, but you don't want to lift the natural. So yes. my question would be, what is the natural level? What is the percentage of gray? And are you going to, so I'm assuming you're wanting to color the same color as the pepper. And we're gonna cover that in a second. But if you can answer the natural level and um, percentage of gray, I can probably answer that for you. So waiting for Michelle Rodriguez. Uh, okay, going to another question from Brenda Moore. Uh, when foiling, of course, when applying foiling, the process can be longer than 10 minutes. What, yes. what is the, time, the longest time it can be on? Well, when I tested it for myself, so when I first got this color a few years ago, um, I tested on swatches, left it on for 10 minutes, left it on for 30 minutes, left it on for 60. And visually, there wasn't a significant difference between the 10 minute and the 60 minute. What can happen is if the hair is porous, if it is um, fine to medium texture, it can appear a little bit darker because now you're having those dyes staining the cuticle when you leave it on for longer. So a couple of ways to kind of mitigate that would be, say for example, you can do your foiling application and just let her process. And when you know that there's about 15 or 20 minutes left before you have to wash those foils, then you can apply your root color. That's one way of doing it, um, if you don't wanna leave it on longer. But a second way of doing that could be to do the root color first, wash, towel dry, and then foil. Um, it's an extra step, but time-wise, it takes the same amount of time, it's just cleaner. Or you could foil and color at the same time and leave it on um, just, you know, just be mindful if you're leaving it on for an hour, 
it's not going to get darker, but it will stain a little bit and maybe harder to lift out in the future because now it's sat on there for that long. Okay, so we can state that uh, up to 50 minutes is almost fine, no? Yeah, the, the 10 minute and 30 minute swatch was fine. It was the 60 and plus, which was- Yes, of course. It's, it's just a long time for the color to stay on there. Okay, so another question from uh, Mark. Okay, I suppose is can you mix the hash enhancers with 0, 0.00? Um, so the 0, 0.00 is just alkalinity. Um, you can, but I want to know why, because maybe there's another way to achieve that. Because um, sometimes when you mix those two together, it can kind of counteract each other. Okay, okay, uh, so. Another question, uh, because Michelle Rodriguez, she replied, so the na natural level was a four, but she wants, she wants her gray to level lighters. She's 75% gray. Okay, um, I'm thinking. So she's natural level four, 75% white, and she wants it two levels lighter, but I thought the question was how do I, deposit without lightning yes yes but um but if you're wanting to go two levels lighter then you would probably have to use um, a 21 volume and probably a level six natural and half if you don't want warmth and just so you guys know for any like specific formulation questions if i can't answer them because i have so many other questions for you um you can send me a dm on instagram or send me an email and i'll be happy to obviously help you. or they can email to education at moan.it there you go education at moan.it um and i will get that and and uh, try to answer your questions okay. then so we have uh hello caroline from hawaii can you please go over the color and answers again? Yes, so I'm going to um, go to the slide that has that, where is it? One second. Okay, so you guys can see my mouse right over here. These are the color enhancers. Okay, we have seven of them to choose from. And what these are, are oxidative dyes, okay? So they're not like vivid colors, they're not direct dyes. They come out of the tube white and creamy and you have to mix it with a developer. What these are designed to do is to help you with enhancing any of the other colors in the line. So say for example, you want to use a level 7.1, which is an ash, but you want a little bit more of a blue, but you don't want to use the 7.11, one. maybe you don't have it. You can add blue to that formula to kind of add a little, like to customize it. Um, you can add a little bit of the gray enhancer to that formula to make it a little bit more ash. Uh, if you have a copper, say you're using a 7.4 copper on a client and you want it to be brighter, you can mix in the gold with your seven copper to create a more reflective copper. Um, and essentially what you do is whatever you add to your formula. So say you have 10 grams of the seven copper and you add 10 grams of the gold, you now have 20 grams of color and you need to do 20 grams of developer. So it's not like a kicker, it's not an enhancer, you mix it in with your formula to customize your shades. Um, they're incredible <laughs> because you can make cr custom shades and that's just in a nutshell what they what they are okay so <clears throat> bas so another question I suppose about the color answers is basically, basically what you are saying is like having up to additional colors to help to boost the color can you repeat that one more time it's basically okay. like what Sorry. Basically, but basically, what you are saying is like having pigmentation colors to help to boost the color. Yes, yes. So it's just additional. There's no brown in the enhancers, so they're it's red or it's orange or it's a violet, uh, but it's not the same as a direct dye. So some people will try to use that instead of, for example, pure shades, which is a direct dye. It's a different chemistry. It's a different chemical. 
but yes, it can boost um, whatever you're looking for. Um, you can do up to half of your formula with the enhancer, but like I was saying earlier, be mindful, right? If you're mixing blue into a level 10, you, you can't do 50% of your formula because that's gonna drop that level 10 down significantly. So when you look at the swatch, if you could put a level on it so that it makes sense in your head, if blue looks like a level three, so how much level three would you add in your level 10? Versus how much would you add into a level 2.0? Does that make sense? So you have to use your uh, creative stylus hat to understand how much you can get away with. But technically by magic standard, you can mix up to half of your formula with enhancers. Okay, so, okay, this question is how, how do you know how much color enhancer you would have to add? That's a really good question. So what, the best way that I can explain it, again, because these are um, enhancers, they're not, there's no brown in them, right? So you can't really put a level on them. So what I did, and this is just personal experience, when I first got the color, I swatched them all out. So I mixed every single enhancer with 21 volume and I put it on a piece of cotton so I could see visually what it looks like so then I know how much to add. So it, it's a difficult question to answer because it doesn't have a level. And that's why I say, you know, think about it as, as a creative stylist, understanding how color works, you know, you could probably add half of your formula of orange, gold, or red in a level six or seven, okay? But you probably don't wanna add as much of that in a level 10. You can probably add more yellow into a level 10. So you kinda of have to determine um, where you think they lie level-wise in order to mix them into your formula. Okay. Still about the color enhancers. Uh, if you do equal parts, color and color enhancers, will the shade last as long as usual? The, the color will last as long as usual, but the reflect and the tonality will, will eventually fade. So because they're oxidative, they are the same technology, right? It's micropigments. They're smaller. They're going to couple. They're going to combine and, and stay in the hair. Uh, so it's not gonna fade as quickly as a direct dye, but every permanent color fades, it always does. So it will fade, just not necessarily quicker. Okay. Um, for the blue and the green, is there a level we do not want to use them on, like blue on six or darker? No, I've used blue on a level four before and a level five. So I had a client who wanted very, very dark hair, um, but I didn't want to put a black on her hair. So I mixed, I think it was a 4.0 or 5.0, half and half with blue. So it gave her the look of darkness that she wanted, but I know I put a level five on her. So when it comes time to trying to lighten, I'm not going to have a disaster of a level one blue black. Um, so no, you can put them in any level. You just have to mix them in according to the level you're putting them with. Okay, so are the swatches on white hair or uh, are, the, are the swatches on white hair on a level of color like level six? I'm I, gonna, suppose, I suppose the swatches of color chart. Yeah, I'm gonna assume it's on white hair. Um, yes, it is. It is, okay, yeah, it's on white hair. <laughs> okay, then another question is from Jason. So I, find, I, find, I, I found the warm colors very warm and the cool colors very cool. So it is okay to add the zero zero series to the cool shade to warm them up a bit and use yes, the, yes, yes, and vice versa. Yes, yeah. If you, um, people say that all the time, well, I don't want it to be too cool. And I don't want it to be too warm, so I say that mix the two. And you have a neutral natural, you're fine. <laughs> yes, because our colors are perfectly balanced, so they can be mixed each other without any problem. And welcome to Italian hair color, extremely pigmented and beautiful. So yes, mix them together, you'll be fine. Okay, then uh, Sasha, 
what is the e really easy way to explain this to my customers? So who asks, who, who, to whom, whom is asking what causes gray hair? Just blame their husband. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you just let them know. The reason I went technical was for you guys. Obviously, you can't do a client. Um, you just let them know that over time, the hair doesn't produce as much melanin, so your hair just gets. They don't need to understand the rest of it. That's for you guys. Okay, so I suppose. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so when using the ultra blondes as toner, should I leave the ten minutes or eyeball it? I suppose control it and can the fantasy colors be used alone or with naturals okay so the first question when you're using the ultra blondes as a toner um it's actually recommended to leave it on five to ten minutes um i always say make sure you watch it um give it at least five minutes so that the dyes can process and um uh, develop but after that, definitely watch it and see what it's doing and rinse as necessary. So sometimes what can happen when you're using the ultra blondes as a toner, um, if there's any natural hair, you know, just, just keep your eye on it after the five minute process to make sure that it has developed. Um, the second part of the question was, can the enhancers be used by themselves? No, I suppose the fantasy, the fantasy family. Fantasy or enhancers? Fantasy, she wrote fantasy. Okay, so what's on the screen, the fantasy series, like the 8.24, 7.40, um, those can be used by themselves with developer. They don't have to be mixed in. It's just a blended color family. So you can use them on their own. Okay, so, uh, okay, then from Jason, just, uh, I, lo I love Magic Stand using for what for one month it has changed my life and career okay yeah, me too. <laughs> thank you and uh, okay so then another question is i have i have a, cl a client that has an allergic reaction to many brands of colors will it be wise using magic stand on air if i'm gonna be honest i would say find out what the allergic reaction is to and if she's allergic to if she's actually allergic or if she's sensitive. Um, and if so, I would say do a patch test because typically what most people have a sensitivity to is ammonia. And obviously we have ammonia. It's not a high amount, but we have ammonia. Um, they're also sensitive to PPD. People can be allergic to PPD. To which pigments, is, yes, to the pigments. Uh, dye intermediaries that are used. Um, typically those are in the darker colors. Um, so I, I will do patch test um, just to make sure because you don't want to create a situation where somebody might have an allergic reaction in your chair. So patch test. Like, yeah. Okay, I would like ju just to say that uh, as you told, uh, uh, told us, Arad, that uh, we should make uh, uh, difference between people who is sensitive or intolerant to people that is allergic but at the moment people that is allergic is around uh, 0.001 percent and uh, what is very important uh, with magic stand is we know that all the sense people that is sensitive or is uh, uh, intolerant it is usually it comes before uh, after a long exposure with some uh, chemicals or ingredients so what is also very important with Magic Stand that we cut the times of exposure, the exposure times, and cutting those time also uh, we expose less uh, to any risk our the, our the clients. Yeah. So I mean, essentially, the ammonia sensitivity begins after the thirty minute mark. Or here's something I've ran into, and maybe this is possible as well is if you're not mixing your color well enough, okay, if it's not nice and creamy and there's any clumps, you have to understand, if you paint that clump on a client's head and break it up, that's ammonia is just gonna go 
So it could cause a little sensitivity right there, a little itch, a little tingle. Um, so make sure your color is mixed evenly and, and, and nice and creamy. And like Maurizio said, you guys, usually the, the sensitivities are for long exposure time. So just make sure, is it a sensitivity or an allergy? You will know if your client has an allergy, they balloon, they, they swell up. Um, it's a very scary and I've had that one time in my 19 years. Um, so be mindful of that. And then we also have uh, the Magix One Up spray that you could um, spray onto the client's scalp to help with any type of sensitivity, not allergic reaction, sensitivity. Yes. So I hope that answers. Okay, so thank you again. So will you be giving us some examples of ML to, of color to, okay, uh, of ML or, or to color on several levels? Yes, we'll be going into a little bit of form, a little bit of formulation and how to formulate for different scenarios. And and does gray white have less coverage? Like maybe the analysis like take the boldness of the gray white. Maybe you can write by yourself. Is, is I'm not understanding the question. Um, so, oh, let me see if I can read it, hold on. Yes, it's a good name. And does gray white have less coverage? Does gray or white hair cover less? No. Maybe the enhancers take the boldness on gray. So honestly, I'm not understanding um, the question. So if you can try to answer or ask it maybe in a different way, um, that would help me because I don't know if I'm, I'm getting it. So another question is from Mark Paris. Does fantasy shade cover gray without adding a natural shade on? From my side, I try it, it both and it covered. Yep, it depends on the percentage of gray uh, that the client has. It can cover 100% without adding naturals, which is a great segment or leeway into uh, the rest of this uh, presentation. So if there aren't any more questions, can we go on to the next slide? Um, we can go, we can go to the next slide. Let's go and then we have one more. This is the last kind of uh, chunk of it and then we'll go into some more q &A. Okay, so one of the most important things is to understand how to identify percentages of gray. There are some people, some lines that make it very, very overcomplicated. And when I ask how much percentage of gray, they're like, oh, 27%, 63%, 70 Okay, so the way I look at it is when you're using Magix, there's either under 50% or over 50%. And then kind of subcategories between that. So the best way to tell if somebody has under 50% gray is when you look at their hair and you look at their regrowth, you see more of their natural versus the gray. So for example, this last client here, you see more of her natural everywhere, except for right here, she's got a chunk of way more white than uh, more salt than pepper. So to identify first, you gotta think, okay, when I look at their roots, does it look gray or does it look more like the natural? If it looks more like the natural, they are under 50% gray, okay? So when you're dealing with under 50% gray, Subcategory of that is if it's under 25% and they have only a couple of sparklers, for example, this first picture here, you don't need to add anything else to your formula. The whole line will give you the coverage that you're looking for. When it's over 25% gray, we recommend that you add from five to 25% of your formula in either a cool natural, warm natural, or gold, okay? So, under 50% gray, you can add five to 25% of your formula in a natural or a gold. Now, what we all have to be mindful of is if you're using a more of a fashion tonality, like a copper or a red or uh, you know brighter colors, the more natural you add, the more it's gonna take away from the reflect of that copper. Okay, so a quick tip for you is if you are mixing in the red, copper, gold families, use gold as your natural, okay? The gold will help give you that coverage that you're looking for without muting or drowning down 
your final result. If you're scared to use gold because it might be too warm, add a warm natural. So when you're doing reds or red coppers, if you're gonna add a natural, add the warm natural. Because when you add the cooler natural, you have to understand the coolness is gonna refract the color and not make it as vibrant. So um, five to 25% of your formula in one of those colors, 0 .0, 0, 0, or 0 0.3, depending on the color that you're using, okay? Then we have over 50%. So these are the clients, when you look at their roots, you see it's white, more white than, more salt than pepper. In all three of these examples, it's more salt than pepper. So in that category of over 50% gray, you're gonna add 25 to 50% of your formula in a natural, warm natural, or a gold. Again, when you're looking for a warmer end result, Add in the warmer backgrounds, like the 0 .00 or the 0 .3, if you're working with reds or coppers. If you're working with a, a, a goal as a cooler end result, then you can add some of your cool natural. But it is, when you're at that over 50% gray, you wanna add some element of a natural or a gold. Um, the color line will cover 100%. But this is when we have to start taking into consideration the law of color, right? What, when we're dealing with white hair and you put just a cool color on it, what's going to happen, okay? It's the same thing when we're toning versus when we're working with white hair. So you can put a 6.66 .66 on that client over there who's the first one. It's gonna be red. It's gonna be very, very vibrant. So you have to add an element of natural or gold to make sure it doesn't look hollow and that you get the coverage that you're looking for. So when it comes to understanding percentages, just know, okay, when I'm looking at them, if they look like they're more pepper than salt, then, you know, they're in the under 50%. If they look like they are more salt than pepper, they're in the over 50%. And you will add the natural or gold accordingly, okay? So now I wanna get into um, the different types of gray coverages. Remember in the beginning I said gray coverage is very nuanced and it's very um, different for each client. So this, this category is what I do a lot of, which is modern coverage. And there's two different um, ways to get modern coverage. So one would be a gray toning, okay? So your goal is to deposit or tone on the salt on the white hair, um, to, for it to be the same level or a little bit darker than the pepper hair, okay? This is a client who doesn't want a commitment, doesn't want a line of demarcation. Maybe they're just kind of putting their feet into the gray coverage, gray reduction pool, okay? So for this particular client, if you're just trying to make the salt a little bit darker to tone down the gray, um, you're going to mix one part color to one and a half parts of the developer, and you're going to use fix. This is the six volume. And I would recommend doing it on damper hair. That way you have a little bit more control of deposit. And this is five to eight minutes. So this is what I use on my male clients who want just a little bit of toning down. Uh, this is what I use for first time gray coverage clients just to get their feet wet. Now, if somebody wants a little bit more commitment, okay, uh, we do a gray blending. So gray blending is basically where you will deposit um, on the salt hair. So you're going to darken the white um, and then to, for it to be the same level or possibly one level lighter than the pepper hair. And the client wants a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit more warmer. Okay, so now we're gonna disturb some of that pepper and lighten it and warm it. Um, you would mix one to one with 12 volume. So 12 volume is gonna give you a little bit of lift, a little bit of warmth, but we'll also do a slight deposit on the white hair. So this is a gray blending. This is usually step two. So after I've done a gray toning on a client and they want a little bit more uh, 
they want to shift their natural a little bit, they want a little bit more deposit, we'll do a gray blending with the 12 volume. And you're going to watch that for about eight to 10 minutes. So this is what I have my clients um, kind of on. The, the model that you see in that picture was one of the models from one of the classes we did last year. And I did the gray blending um, for her. So as you can see, we don't have a solid opaque coverage. I wanted it to look like I spent three hours highlighting her hair, but I didn't. And that's essentially the result that we got. So we blended her gray. Um, it was very dimensional. It was very, um, um, just very beautiful in my opinion. So gray toning, gray blending, okay? The next step, which is what we typically do, is a total coverage. This is your standard gray coverage. Um, the goal is that all of the white hair, all of the salt hair, is colored to the chosen level, not necessarily the color of the pepper. So what happens is, in the beginning I was saying, when you're dealing with salt and pepper, you're dealing with two different colors of hair. And somehow you got to get them to meet in the middle. So whatever level you're choosing, so say the end result is a level eight natural, then we have to deposit the, the salt and we have to lift the pepper to meet in that level eight or level seven. Now, what you have to be mindful of is when you're using, and this is across the board guys with any color, if you're using a level eight, nine or 10, okay, you're not going to get as much deposit because the higher the level of color that you're using, the more alkalinity it has and the less pigment. So the, the threshold of coverage stops or starts right about level eight. So when you put a level 10 on a client, for example, you're not gonna get a full deposit. It, it, it's not enough pigment to opaque coverage, okay? You're gonna get a little bit more of a reflect, a little bit more of a blend in an eight, nine or 10 levels. But if you are trying to get that total coverage and getting that pepper to meet with the salt, ideal is right around level six, seven, seven and a half. That's kind of where the happy medium is if they're in the medium brown category. Um, and the way you're gonna do that, your standard gray coverage is one to one equal parts with 21 volume in a 10 minute process. So you will apply your color, you will set your timer. Um, this is the case if, if they have more than 50% gray, you're gonna add you know, your 0 .0, 0 .00, 0 0.0, as needed. Um, <clears throat> but this is gonna get you the standard gray coverage results, okay? Um, this is if the client has medium texture hair. So going back one slide, this gray blending can work as a total coverage if the client has fine hair. So remember, always important to understand the canvas. So fine hair will be different formulation than uh, medium to coarse hair. <clears throat> so when you mix one to one, so this client in the picture had fine hair, okay? She had fine to medium, but mostly the top back was fine. When you do one to one with 12 volume, sometimes on finer hair you can get better coverage versus when you do it on resistant or coarse hair. So moving into that resistant and coarse hair, this is where people have the most challenges. Now, I get it because when you don't understand resistant hair and what causes it to be resistant, you treat it like just like every other gray head of hair and then you don't get the results you want. So when you understand the canvas, you understand the chemicals and how to finesse them, you can get a better gray coverage result on resistant hair. So remember a couple of slides earlier, I had um, regular hair and resistant hair, and the resistant hair had more layers of a cuticle. So when you have more layers of cuticle, what you essentially need is um, increased alkalinity and increased dye if the hair is coarse. So typically, and I think if you're a stylist, you can relate, your resistant gray clients are also very, very coarse hair. So not only are you dealing with additional layers of cuticle, you're also dealing with a wider um, a diameter of the hair. 
So you have to now add more alkalinity to soften and swell those layers of cuticles and possibly a little bit more dye to fill in that diameter. I'm hoping this is making sense, uh, so just bear with me. So when the client wants opaque coverage, um, there are some clients who like a very opaque, um, dark, no reflect coverage, and you want a full deposit on coarse or resistant hair. Um, what you can do is mix one and a half to one. So you're just doing a little bit more alkalinity, a little bit more dye to help um, fill in that diameter and to help soften and swell that cuticle. So for example, it would be like 60 grams of developer or 60 grams of color to 40 grams of developer. One and a half ounces of color to one ounce of developer. And this is strictly for those clients that are resistant and coarse. You don't want to do this formulation on a fine haired client. Okay. Um, it won't work as well. So you can do that. Okay. Or another option, which is what manufacturer recommends is do one-to-one -one using your 21 volume, but drop down a level. So if you are typically going to use a level six, what I would do is use a level five or a five and a half because now there's more dye at, a level, at, at one level darker to help that diameter appear darker, okay? Um, and by dropping that half to one level, you're gonna get a little bit more of that opaque coverage when you're dealing with resistant 75% and up gray hair. So I think what's just important to understand is, is who are you, what is the client, what does their hair look like, what is their texture? What is the salt? What is the pepper? And then go into formulating instead of just throwing a 5N, which you can do that as well. I mean, it just kind of depends on the results that you want as, as a stylist, as a professional stylist. Um, and then the last kind of category is lifting and gray coverage. Um, a couple of notes on this is, <coughs> excuse me, the Ultra Lift Blondes with Magics are not created for gray coverage, okay? So typically an Ultra Lift family is created for maximum lift, not necessarily maximum deposit. So you will not get a good gray coverage if you're trying to use a high lift. I'll just tell you that from now, okay? So lifting and gray coverage, the goal with this is typically to achieve you know, two to three levels of lift on the pepper and deposit on the salt. So when you're trying to lift the pepper up um, a couple of levels, you're going to mix uh, one to one, whatever your chosen formula is, with the 32 volume. So the 32 volume is going to create additional lift um, when it comes to your lifting part of the gray coverage. Now it's important to remember though, 32 volume will not get as incredible of a deposit on the, on the salt. So 32 volume is your threshold. You don't ever wanna use 40 volume uh, when it comes to any type of gray coverage because it, it won't give you the coverage that you're looking for. But if you need a little bit of additional lift, <clears throat> 32 volume um, will get you that as well as cover some of that white hair, okay? So again, the Ultra Lift Blondes will not cover gray hair. Um, <clears throat> people have tried it. Um, it just, it's, that's not what it's designed for, right? It's designed for lift um, and, and slight deposit. So that is what you would do if you're trying to lift. You're going to mix one-to-one -one with 32 volume. So now I want to get into a couple of pro tips. And these are just me as a stylist um, for 19 years, what has worked. Um, and what's going to get you the best results? I've tried all of these with Magix 10 and I've had phenomenal results with them. So this is a little bit, um, you know, pro tips from me essentially. So the first thing that you can do is if you're not getting the results that you're wanting. So these are more um, troubleshooting. Uh, if, if you did everything by the book and you mixed and you assessed and you did all of that and you're still having some issues, um, these are some troubleshooting things for you. So the first thing you can do is clarify the hair before you apply the color. 
Now, when I say clarify, that doesn't mean scratch and agitate the scalp. That means you wanna make sure that the hair doesn't have any impurities on it. Um, I don't know about you guys, my clients were using the root sprays, shadows, mascara, they come in with all of that. And you gotta think that that's a barrier to the hair color. So if you have the hair here and your chemicals here, but in the middle there's the, the spray and the mascara and hairspray and all that stuff, it's gonna make it harder for you to get the coverage that you want. So when you clarify and cleanse the hair, now you're working on a clean canvas, the color can then do its job. Uh, but it's important not to agitate the scalp because you are putting an ammoniated color on, just clarify the hair. Um, adding gold to your formula will always help you achieve better gray coverage results. Gold is what's missing in gray hair. When the way I look at color, and I'm not gonna go deep into this, but essentially you're missing gold. If you add gold to gray, you get brown. So you're missing gold. So adding gold is gonna give you um, sometimes better coverage, okay? Um, application, start your application where the hair is most coarse and most gray, okay? Most people want to start in the very front hairline. That's fine if it's the grayest and the coarsest. It's just very important to analyze your client because sometimes the hair right around the hairline is fine. And what can happen is if that's where you apply first, that's where the color is sitting the longest and because it's fine, it can sometimes appear darker. So analyze your client's hair. Um, and start your application where it's the coarsest and the grayest. So typically crown area is um, what is the situation for me. I have a couple clients who are very resistant and very coarse around their hairline. So it's just depending on your client. Proper saturation is one of the most important factors in getting uh, superior gray coverage. And I've seen a lot of stylists work. Um, so here's what proper saturation looks like. You're taking a little less than a quarter inch subsection, thin enough to where if you put a piece of paper, you can read through the hair, okay? Thin, thin sections, heavy saturation. So you have to make sure there's enough color on that gray for it to cover, okay? And paint both sides. So don't just paint one side. If you're trying to get adequate gray coverage, make sure you paint both sides, make sure you put enough color, make sure you're taking thin subsections, okay? Um, using alkalinity to pre-soften. So some people like the idea of pre-softening the hair. Remember, if we're talking about layers and layers of cuticle, sometimes you might have to soften that up a little bit. And the best way to go about that is to use alkalinity. And what that could look like is, here's an example. Say your, your um, formula is a 6.0 with 21 volume. That's the goal, that's what you're gonna use. To pre-soften, you would use a color that is lighter and possibly warmer. So you could take, for example, level 8.3 gold or 8.00. Take it straight from the tube and apply where it's the most resistant. What that's gonna do is it's gonna soften the hair, okay? You don't mix it with developer. Some people use just developer to pre-soften and that doesn't work. So you can use a lighter color that has a little bit of warmth beforehand. So you would apply it, leave it on, and then apply your 6.0 directly on top of that. And what that does is it gives the alkalinity some time to start softening the cuticle and that way when you put your six natural on you're going to get a better deposit okay and this is for extreme cases where anything else doesn't work and some some clients have incredibly resistant hair um, so this would be a, a time when you would use that um, applying to clean damp hair like i said earlier um, damp not wet so what happens when you're, the hair is damp and you put color on with the damp hair, hydrogen bonding happens and the color just tends to deposit a little bit better. But it, it's very important that it's damp. You can't squeeze any water out of it. It's as if you just misted the hair slightly. Um, you can always add additional dye. 
Okay. And again, these are just for me being behind the chair, what has worked for me. Um, say you have processed your client and uh, you go to check and some of the color has slipped off. Okay. Or it's a little too reflective. You didn't add enough dye. What you can do is while the color is still on the hair, you can mix the same formula with fix. So say it's the same client with the 6.0 formula. Um, you have her color on and you realize that part of the color has slipped off a little bit. You would mix 6.0 with fix and just add additional dye. So the hair is already softened. Everything's already working. You just need a little bit more dye. You would do that for a couple minutes and then that will probably get you that, that coverage that you're looking for. So don't wash the hair, just add additional dye to the top. You have to mix it with developer um, in order for the dyes to activate. Um, remix depending on timing. So this is a question that gets asked often, is if you're working on a client with really long hair or really thick hair and it's gonna take you 20, 30, 40 minutes to apply, you wanna remix halfway through and create a new bowl of color. Because what happens is the color, as soon as you start mixing it, it begins to oxidize and it begins to, the, the process kind of starts happening. So after about 20 or 30 minutes, um, those, those dye molecules have coupled and it can get to a point where you're not going to get the results you want. So at the 20, 30 minute mark, you would then mix a fresh new bowl of color. So that way you get the best results. You get the most even results. Okay. And then the best for me, the, the greatest thing has been Magic's One Up. It's a spray. Um, it helps with uh, gray coverage and, and getting better gray coverage. It helps with any type of scalp sensitivity. So if anybody has a sensitive scalp and it actually helps condition the hair and helps just the color take a lot better. So these are just some tips, just what has worked for me behind the chair. Um, in using magics and hopefully can help you when you're dealing with um, potential situations of clients in your chair and what you can do to mitigate and get the best results. Um, with that being said, I wanna just share with you guys, we do have some promos. So if any of you are interested, um, you would obviously contact your distributor, but there is a, a kit that includes six, six colors that you can choose. You can choose whatever colors you want, two developers, a paper color chart, and a color service menu, and it's extremely discounted. Um, and this is really helpful, especially right now with what's going on with some of us are just now getting back to work. Um, the discount helps, and obviously the 10-minute processing time is extremely helpful when uh, trying to handle the surge of clients who are all trying to get in at the same time. Um, we also have some promotional tools for you guys. So what can happen is um, sometimes when you have like a tabletop easel or a little sticker on your mirror, it gets clients asking questions about what you're using. And it's just support for um, the clients and the hairdressers. So there's obviously a whole bunch of things that we have to help if you decide to bring Magics on to kind of spread the word into your salon and so your clients kind of know what's going on. Um, the website also has a salon locator, so if you are a magic salon, you can be found um, on the website. If clients are looking for um, stylists who are using magics, they can go on the website and find you. Um, so I wanted to leave it on this screen. Obviously, if you guys are on social media, uh, feel free to follow us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Moan International. We also have a website that has a lot of information. Um, some of the technology and a lot about the company um, that I would encourage you to go check out and do some research and read a little bit more about, um, you know, what people are saying about it and what is, what the whole line is and what it can do um, for you. So with that, that is the end of what I have for you guys as far as information. Um, and we can open it up to any kind of Q&A if there's any questions. Yes, we have uh, some questions. So the first is, this line has to correct the color as fast as it deposits. 
um, this line has to correct the color as fast as it deposits? Yeah, this is a question. I don't know if I understand the question. So can you use it for correcting color? If that's the question, then yes. And it will take, it will process just the same. Five to eight minutes with fix, 10 minutes with uh, 12 to 32 volume. Okay, so then, okay, it's so not the question. This part of is the most interesting part of the webinar. Thanks. Oh, good. You're welcome. I am trying to color a client who is 100% great, but she wants her hair level 11. What, what would be the, my formula mix? Um, so if she's 100% gray, that means her hair is white. Yes. So that is essentially a level. Are you trying to make it darker? Um, no, she's 100%. Uh, she, want, she wants 11, 11. We don't have an 11, so what I would probably do is mix a level 10 natural with 12 volume and time it for five to eight minutes. Um, that's gonna give that white hair a little bit of a deposit. I suppose yes. that, that level 11 should be considered like a platinum, platinum blonde, maybe silver. Yeah, it depends on what, yeah. It, that's a tricky um, question. If you can yes. send me I can help you formulate um, but if they're already white you could just use the silver shampoo from pure shades and that might kind of get rid of the yellowy and make it more of a platinum okay okay so in the new literature the recommended use using of 52 volumes for gray coverage with level 10 7 to 10 However, I was under the impression that this, this, this was the only, uh, only done when lifting and covering gray, or when you want a shear and result. Yes, so I, here's how I explain it, because that's come up a lot. So the reason you would use, there's only one scenario that I can think of that you would use a 32 volume for a gray coverage. And here's kind of like what you said to get a shear and result. So remember how I said the threshold for gray coverage is level eight, nine, 10. So say you have a client that wants to be um, full coverage. So she doesn't want the blending, she wants it covered, but she wants it at a level nine. You would use then a level eight color with 32 volume to shear it out and make it look more like a nine, but you're gonna get a little bit more deposit because of the, the dye load at a level eight. So typically, yes, you're right. If you're, you, you would only use the 32 volume when you're lifting and trying to cover gray, or when client wants like opaque coverage, uh, so you'd have to use a darker color to get a better coverage, but then you would use the oxygen from the 32 volume to help shear it out a little bit. Okay, then is a question for you. Will you be coming to Hawaii anytime soon? Can we get <laughs> private classes? Classes? I would love to. Um, I don't know. We can talk about that. Yes. That'd be fun. Maybe when uh, the the pandemic will be over. <laughs> when we can travel again. Yes. Um, okay. How did you say we can get some window mirror cleans? for our business to advertise the color? So you're gonna reach out to your distributor and um, kind of ask them what the deals that they have going on. It's included in some of the promo packages when you buy in, um, but I would contact your distributor. And if you don't know who that is, then you can send us an email and we can kind of direct you. Okay, so uh, look, I suppose the last question is, with using 4.3 on white hair, client is on blood pressure meds. Color takes ever other time. Oh God. Okay, so um, that's weird that the color takes every other time. What you can try is if she is on medication, so here's what you gotta remember, right? So our hair and our scalp are part of our excretory system, which means whatever we put into our body will come out of our skin and our hair as well. 
So if client is on medications, there's high, highly good chance that it's on her hair. That's when you would go into a cleaning um, beforehand. So what I do, and this is a little bit unconventional, but I have sold my clients a clarifying shampoo and I tell them to use that the day that they come in to get their hair done so that I know their hair is clean and I can just get right to the application. Um, so when you're dealing with people who are on medication, um, sometimes that medication is on their hair, which could cause some type of a reaction. So clarifying would probably help um, for it to take every time. Um, and if the client is 100% white, yeah, I, I would say first try clarifying every time. And then if that doesn't work, then we can kind of troubleshoot some other um, ideas. Okay, so no more questions. No more questions, that's it? No. Yes. Cool. Okay, well, I just wanna say thank you guys. I know that was a lot of information. Um, please feel free to email or um, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, if you have any questions you will get a link um, of this pre-recorded or of this recording in a couple of days. And I'm always here to answer your guys' question. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Okay, so thank you so much to everyone to attending to our webinar and hope to see you soon. And I would love to go to Hawaii. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> wait, wait, maybe there is another quest. Is there? Okay, no, I suppose someone is saying us thank you. Okay, everything's okay. Thank you too. Thank you very much, you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Oh, Instagram here. I'll I'll post it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, your Insta. Last question. Your Instagram. Like <laughs> this is yeah. always the last question. I know. I should just put it on this page. So my Instagram yes. is. Um, this underscore is underscore autos. So I'm going to actually put it in, uh, where's the chat box? I'm trying to find the chat. Shoot. So I'll send it to you. I, I figured out how to send a private. But it's, this is autos, um with underscores. Ritu, do you know how to put it in the chat? Um, let's do it. Let me, let me, how many people does it take? Just a out. second and let me see how can we can do this way. Did it work? Um I can sh I think yeah. that's I can share the screen and show your account. I believe it's also on the flyer for this Zoom, so Oh, I have to stop sharing my screen in order. Yes, to yes, I can. Go. Okay, this is. That's this me. is a yes. So feel free to you guys can absolutely send me messages there. Um, on my work, I I post a lot of my formulas, if not all of them. Um, so. I'm definitely here to help in any way that I can. I appreciate you guys' time. I know this was a lot of information. Thank you. Okay. We're good? Okay, yes, we're good. So thank you so much. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.